Practice can be serious business, but we can also make it fun. And in today's show, I'm going to talk about some mat games and drills that can make training for both adults and kids a lot more enjoyable and a lot more productive. So stay tuned. Hi everybody, I'm Steve Scott and welcome to another episode of Freestyle Judo. Well, on today's show, I want to uh, do two things. We're going to look at fun and games on the mat and then I'm going to do a couple of book reviews. We'll do those book reviews first because there's some really interesting books I'd like to bring to your attention that I've used and I, um, I think they'll be great for your library. So we'll get to those in a second. But first, let's talk about fun and games on the mat. And when talking about fun and games, uh, I go back to uh, what my good friend John Saylor said some years ago, uh, training should be more like a party than like a funeral. And I think that's true. You know, you don't want to be silly or giddy or anything, but at the same time, um, you don't have to be dour and, and depressed and uh, look, you know, it's drudgery. Mat games and drills that we can we use often can really spice up a practice, can make it more productive, and certainly make it a lot more enjoyable for everybody who's on the mat. And I'm not just talking about kids either. I'm talking about adults too because um, whether adults, you know, tough, young, macho guys like to admit it or not, uh, playing a game as a warm-up or just a, a break in training is a lot of fun, and it's a great way to um, – get more out of your athletes if you're a coach. I'm looking at it from a coaching standpoint. But if you're an athlete, it sure is a lot of fun, and it's, it's, it's great phys ed for the kids. So there's some, there's some key things we're going to talk about that in a moment. But let's first get to some book reviews. There are two Dynamite books. And when I do book reviews, uh, they're always positive, number one, because I'm not going to review a book that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pan. Uh, there, there, there are some books out there that, of course, one could do that. But, you know... You want to build a good library of books you can rely on and you can use time and time again. I often say, um, you know, when I read a book, an author speaks to me. He talks to me. And every time I picked up that book, he, he and I have another conversation. And, you know, often I learn something more from that conversation every time I pick up that book a second, third, fourth, fiftieth time, whatever it is. And the two books I'm going to review here certainly do that. Uh, so let's first, let's get to, um, let's do the... Uh, a bigger book here, <clears throat> and it came out of the market in 2016 in the U.S. edition. It came out earlier. It actually, I believe, is a reprint from many years ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. It actually is a reprint from many years ago, and it uh, is Kodakan Throwing Techniques. I'm holding it up here. Can you see that? Kodakan Throwing Techniques by Toshiro Daigo. Uh, this is a classic. This is a classic. It is a very comprehensive book. Um, 285 pages of very well classified, very well presented uh, techniques of throwing of judo, and these are the the latest that came out from the Kodokan. A lot, a lot of their, their, their changes in their nomenclature and stuff. It's all in here. It gives um, not just r really good basic understanding of what the the root technique is. Then it shows a number of variations and applications that are that are added to that basic root technique. You can take any of the techniques and, you know, they, they cover quite a few of them in here. Uh, it also has some history about how that technique evolved and developed, which I find, I'm a geek on history, and I find that very, very interesting. So um, it, it, it really is, and, and of course, Toshiro Dai goes at 10th Don, and he is a true judo master. He really knows his art and craft here. Uh, and uh, the, the people who are demonstrating it, the, the models in the book, have flawless technique. It's really, really, I cannot say enough good things about it. So if you're a coach, you should definitely buy this. <clears throat> okay, you should definitely buy this and use this as great reference. It is fabulous reference. If you're an athlete or just a general student of the game, uh, you cannot go wrong in buying this. This is absolutely one of the best books on the market for throwing techniques, and I highly, obviously, highly recommend it. It is published by Kodansha. You can get it at Amazon or any bookstore. Uh, that's, it's widely available, and I would certainly purchase this book. It's uh, Kodokan Judo Throwing Techniques by Toshiro Daigo. So I know it's not a huge, extensive book review, but I can tell you this. Um, if you want to know about a lot of throwing techniques, I don't think he has every throwing technique in here, obviously, but he certainly has a lot of them. Um, you will, it's, it's money well spent in getting this book. So let's get on to the second book here. 
The next one is another excellent book. I mean, this is a it's, it's a different type of book in, in, on martial arts and judo, but it's called Saving Japan's Martial Arts. Get up there quickly by Christopher M. Clark. And I don't know Mr. Clark, but I'll tell you what, uh, he's an American author, and he does good work, really, really good work. It's well-researched, uh, well-documented. Uh, it is a great go-to book for every coach. I think, I think as a coach, um, you know, I think it's, it's very important that we know the history of judo and know its roots and foundations because, it, it, you know, that way we understand more about the philosophies and, and, and uh, you know, strategies of judo, the, the, the technical theories of judo. Um, it, it, so no matter what's your sport, no matter what your activity, you should know something about, a lot about, um, how it developed and the roots of it. And in, in Mr. Clark's book, Saving Japan's Martial Arts, you can certainly do that. It is uh, 282 pages, and it is uh, published by Clark's Canyon Press. Uh, I believe you can get it on Amazon, uh, and I certainly highly recommend it. And I, I, like, I like this book, and here's why. It's very clear in its its presentation. It it starts uh, from, uh, you know, the the very introduction of it starts about the the, the roots of, of feudal Japanese martial arts and and how they evolved into what what we now know today, and it focuses primarily on uh, the the earth shattering the the, the history changing event uh, called Kodokan Judo, and how Jiro Kano was highly instrumental in changing all of Japan's martial arts. And the book is aptly titled Saving Japan's Martial Arts. That's the premise of the book, that uh, Jiro Kano was the man who saved Japan's martial arts through his invention, innovation of Kodokan Judo. And uh, Mr. Clark certainly lays out the, um, uh, you know, his thesis well. He certainly it, it writes it exceedingly, exceedingly well. He's a good writer. And um, it really is... Uh, there are a lot of little little things in here, you know, little little tidbits that are trivia. I, I love them, and I've used this book in reference before, and in, in talking about some other things we've used, plus some other books. But um, it is full of trivia. If you like trivia, and I'm not saying it's trivial. I'm saying those are the small things. Those are the po small bits of information that you can say, oh, it connects the dots. It say, oh, now I know why this happened because this. And he talks a lot about this in that book. So, um, again, great book. I highly recommend it, especially for coaches, because as a coach, um, you need to know not just, you know, uh, how to do a technique, but, you know, how, why it evolved and, and the history behind it. And this, this book certainly has it. So, again, it's called Saving Japan's Martial Arts by Christopher M. Clark. Uh, great book. Great book, and I highly recommend it. Um, and get it. By all means, get it. So those are two books that I think are really, really worth your time and effort to buy and study and read. Um, and again, I, I don't know how many times I've, I've read and reread Mr. Clark's book here. It is just really worth it. So um, anyway, it's worth worth buying. I guarantee both of them. Okay, let's talk about mat games. Let's talk about mat drills. Now, you, all, all training should be structured. You got to get the most productive. Uh, you know, practice if it's structured, and you're going to cut down on injuries. You're going to have better discipline. There are a lot of reasons to structure every practice, and I, I harp on this. And anybody who watches my videos, read my books, you know that I firmly believe that because it's true. It that really works that way. Mat games uh, are a part of those structure. As part of that structure, part of that drill training. You can look at mat games as kind of like drills because they some are drills, some are games, uh, but they but they teach good physical education mat games do because the kids and adults are active and they're, they're doing things relevant to judo movement you know mat games just couldn't be shouldn't be silly i mean you could make them once in a while just a fun game as a reward but mat games should be relevant to um uh, should directly relate to something we're doing in in, in practice in judo and, and particularly in that particular practice you're having that mat game so let's say uh, the first video we're going to watch here is about British Bulldog, and it goes by different names in different parts of the world. Uh, we've always called it British Bulldog, at least how I heard it first, you know, called that. We've already called it British Bulldog, but it's a great ground game. It's a great game for, it's a lot of fun, but it teaches good, good aggressive Nawaza ground fighting. And you'll see it here when we show the first video. But if you're going to have a, a mainly ground fighting session, uh, you know, a great game is a reward after they've had a good workout. 
It might be British Bulldog, or it might be a great game as a warm-up, you know, because they do warm the body up. It's a game that you physically get the body warmer. Uh, you know, your muscles are, are ready to now proceed to harder training of more, more, more focused training in judo, sambo, whatever it may be. So mat games really do work. Again, you can overdo them. You don't want to overdo the mat games. I've seen instructors do too many mat games, okay? One or two mat games a practice is certainly enough, and you don't have to have every practice having a mat game. You know, kids shouldn't show up, and especially kids will do this. They'll show up and say, what game are we playing tonight? That's not a good attitude. What, you, know, what it's, you, know, it's, it, you know, they want to have fun, yes, but they shouldn't expect a game when they walk on the mat. Okay, it should be done as a reward, or it, it should be done um, carefully, judici judiciously as a, um, uh, a warm-up. You know? So you should make it part of your lesson plan and not just you know, do something when you can't think of what else to do, throw a game at them. You know, that's not good coaching, and I think that's something that uh, you should really be aware of. So <clears throat> use them sporadically, uh, but you can use them regularly. I don't want to say sporadically, but, but you can use them as you need to use them. Again, adults like mat games too. The, you know, young, tough, macho guys or gals may not admit it, but you, know, you can have a lot of fun. You know, I remember going many years at the Olympic Training Center and seeing my, my good friend John Saylor coach the team out there for many years, and he used mat games fairly often. And these were elite level, you know, national, international level judo players. And, uh, and they, they enjoyed them. It was a lot of fun. It was a great warm-up. It was a great cool-down. It was a great break in hard training. Um, and, you know, you can and getting, getting to this as a, a different type of training, you know, um, part of your program. If you've just come off a really hard training uh, period or a training cycle where the, you went to the Nationals or some big event uh, and, then, and then it's over and you want some practices after you know, that aren't as hard, you know, when you, when you come off that hard training cycle, the tournament's over, the, the, everybody comes back on the mat, you know, you can use some mat games just to get things rolling again. You know, it's, it's a great reward for saying, hey, guys, you put up with 10 weeks of hard training, uh, now let's enjoy ourselves a little bit. And a good way to do that is having mat games. So they're, they're, they're very, very useful. So that being said, I think I hopefully sold you on the use of mat games. I know a lot of you use them already. I certainly have used them through the years. And I'll tell you, a, a, a person who uses them with, with great, success uh and he did a a, 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 a a thing at judocon on mat games was james wall james wall patty wall and their and their daughter caitlin um they use mat games a lot in their program in, in denim springs louisiana at their denim at their wall-to-wall -wall martial arts and uh he's got videos out on it so i would i would highly look at anything james wall has on mat games because they're really really good and part of our judo black belt association aau coach uh, education program I think he's included some videos on Matt Games there too. You'll also see some other videos uh, on, on my, my YouTube channel here that we do on games, drills, different types of things you can do. But uh, Matt Games do work. So that being said, all that, all that down the way, let's look at five videos today on Matt Games. And I picked these out, kind of was kind of careful to pick these out because they're good representations of different types of mat games. But the whole, the total focus here is uh, the group dynamics. They're all having fun. They all enjoy themselves. Okay. And you'll also see in, um, especially the first one here um, with, with Ken Brink using British Bulldog with, with his kids at one of his kids' training sessions, um, how the coach needs to always supervise. You should always supervise, always make sure that, you know, no injuries occur. Kids are having fun. Uh, when things get out of hand, step in, um, you know, you know, make sure that it's a safe, good environment for the kids to, to have fun. And adults, too. Adults, too, because injuries could, could happen, could take place. So the first video here is a bit of a long one, but, it, you know, about four, four minutes or so. Um, but it's British Bulldog. And it goes by different names in different parts of the world. But you'll see what I mean. So... We'll watch British Bulldog's first video. Here we go. Hold on, get the other hands in these. Hydrate! 
British Bulldog is a fun game. Uh, I know when I was coaching kids a lot, I used it quite a bit. And it is, it's, I used it as a great reward. After the kids did a good hard workout, I said, okay, let's play British Bulldog. But sometimes, once in a while, I'd fool them, uh, just like I think Ken did in this particular thing. Um, I did it as a good warm-up. So it's, like I said, it's a great warm-up too. So British Bulldog is a lot of fun. Highly recommend it. Um, and there are variations, different variations of it, but you saw how kind of, kind of we do it. Second one here is a Take the Belt game. It's basically Matt Rondori, uh, Nawaza Rondori, and the idea is to uh, take your opponent's belt. They take, take your opponent's belt off of him, and you've got to control him well enough to untie his belt to get it. You'll see what I mean. It's a lot of fun here, and again, Ken Brink is doing this with his kids. So the second video is Take the Belt Rondori, Matt Rondori game. So here we go. Hello. Doing Matt Rondori, but the object is to get their belt off of them by controlling them. So the idea then is just really exerting so much control, demonstrating so much control that you've got him, take his belt off of him. So it's a good training drill. Yes. Yeah, to we're, teach. We're teaching how to how to control when we're in mat work. Great control drill. Okay, thanks, yeah. coach. Control. 
on in. Get on in. Get on and take that bell. Adam. Come on, bud. Don't just chicken do out, Adam. Keep working. I mean, I know you're my Now this third video is going to show a game I call the toe tap or foot tap drill. And it teaches a lot. It teaches um, posture. It teaches good foot movement. It teaches, you know, uh, foot coordination. Uh, and it's just a great, great movement drill. It's a great movement drill. It's a game too. It's a lot of fun game. You can do different levels of it. Uh, I'm doing it in this video with, with uh, some of my adults. And like I said, adults can enjoy this stuff too. The point of the game is to really increase your skill in foot sweeps, foot techniques, and you'll see how it goes. So let's watch this next video on the foot tap or toe tap drill. So here we go. Some warm ups. Warm -ups. Um, let me pick Mike. Here's the game. It's a toe tap game. We've done this before. A ton of time. Just to, just to recap it here. Uh, the, the goal is this. I'm, I'm going to work my fast feet. You know, fast feet. So I want to touch his foot, either foot, it doesn't matter. He doesn't want me to. Some rules, okay? Now, I can't, you know, grab. The idea is I've got to grab my own gear, okay? And we've got to keep pretty close. My job is to touch his foot, and he doesn't want me to. We'll move around. He can't turn his back or run away from me. He can't move back. Okay? And so he's got to go laterally, all right, sideways, and avoid it. He never turn his back. I can't do this. I can't put uh, them or anything else like that. The idea is just I want fast feet. So I don't want to kick him, but I want to touch him with control. Okay? So I just keep trying to touch, 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 and he's going to avoid it. Now it doesn't just stand there and look silly. He moves around because when we move around in judo or sambo, jiu-jitsu, we have to move around like. So my job is to kind of touch his toe. Yeah, He's quicker than me. Yeah. <laughs> but so he'll count. Like if I get like one, two, he counts. But the guy, the defender, always counts. Do 30 seconds. Okay, I'll try to tap his toes as many times as I can in 30 seconds. I'll tell you to start, stop, and he'll get the same. The idea here is to get fast feet. That's all it is. Good fast feet. Because I don't want to be have my feet dead. I want to be able to move. So that's part of what we do, right? Okay, so get part of it. And just team up. And I'll start and stop. Okay, so get the two guys. Just you grab your own heat. Don't, don't bumping or anything. But keep pretty close. Do you want me to take this part, Steve? James, you're looking for it. James, you get it. All right, everybody teamed up. You get it. Want... Yeah. Okay. Ready? Do you want me to video this part, too? Yeah, watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Go! Don't listen to the whistles. I use that foot tap game quite a bit. Um, it, it, it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of fun to do. Well, number one, but also it t it's great coordination as I explained before. So um, I highly recommend the foot tap game, the toe tap game. It, it's it, it also it, you concentrate on your feet, you know, when you're doing it, but your posture has to be really good too. So it teaches a lot of stuff. It teaches about using your hips to move and all that stuff. So great game, great drill. Um, again, don't use it all the time, but use it once in a while to reinforce. It's, it's a great warm-up drill before you start working on foot sweeps. Yeah, there you go. It's a good good reason to use it. Okay, the next game we're going to look at is toilet ball. Okay, and toilet ball has a, a unique history. Um, it, it really is just a game that, that 
I've always played, and uh, Ken, Ken Brink, is, the guys are having it in this practice. You'll see the video. It's just a game is a great reward if they've had a good hard practice. I don't use it too much as I probably never have used it as a warm-up game, but it's a great it's – it's a keep away. It's a keep away game. The reason it's called toilet ball is interesting because when I first saw this many years ago at the Olympic Training Center, uh, the team was using it. And uh, it's a, it was a keep away game, just just you know to finish the practice. Uh, but they didn't have a ball to throw around. You know, they, they use a soccer ball or something else. They didn't have a ball, so somebody got the bright idea of going to the bathroom and getting a roll of toilet paper and taking some white um, athletic tape and wrapping up the toilet, you know, the, the, the roll of toilet paper and making it kind of a ball, semi ball shape. And so then they so it came out of the toilet, so they called it toilet ball. So um, anyway, interesting story, and it's, it's worth just playing just because of the, the, the name of the, the game. But toilet ball is really, it's a, it's a keep away game. You can d- play different variations of it. But you'll see how, uh, in fact, is I think Johnny Shepard, one, one of our young athletes, uh, is uh, showing how to play it here. So kind of listen to him. The background noise may be a bit much, but you can, I think you'll get the idea. So let's watch toilet ball. It's a lot of fun to play. Here we go. Bounce it and throw it up in the air, and you grab the ball. And when you grab the ball on our team, I would say I throw it to Dante. That's one point. And we're going to seven, right? Your are We're going to seven. And I, if I pass it to Dante, Dante can't pass it back to me. That doesn't work. You have to pass it to other people, and if somebody intercepts it or you drop it, then you lose your whole entire score and you have to restart from zero. Real quick, you know why it's called toilet ball? I don't know why. Because they invented this game at the Olympic Training Center back in the – early 80s. I think Coach Saylor, John Saylor was out there. They didn't have a ball, so they went to the bathroom and got a roll of toilet paper and wrapped it up with white, uh, you know, athletic tape, and that was their ball, and so they call it toilet ball. That's how they invented the game. So that's that's why it's called toilet ball. All right, so there's no little kids here, so we should be good. So, But when you catch the ball, the first thing you forgot is you can't move. Yeah. Oh, you can't move. Oh, you can't move. Are you ready? Oh, Ready? Get it, Get it. Get it. Count them out. Basically, toilet ball is a keep away game. It's a great mat game. And we played it a lot. It was, to my knowledge, invented at the Olympic Training Center in the judo team. I think when Coach John Saylor was out there in the early 80s with his squad, and they substituted, they didn't have a ball to play keep away, so they substituted it with a roll of toilet paper wrapped up with athletic tape. They called it toilet ball. It's a great mat game, a lot of fun. It's just something to do at the end of practice after good hard training. Oh, good job. Nothing wrong with having fun and training. And the idea of take keep away to you have a designated score like five times you can keep it away, eight, ten, whatever it may be. So it's basically keep away. So if you can follow here. That's the idea of toilet ball, and they're using a regular ball instead of a roll of toilet paper. So that's, uh, that's toilet. And again, toilet ball requires good supervision. Uh, so coach, uh, keep working the mat. Make sure you know you referee. You know because sometimes they'll get, they'll start arguing over who got the score, who did this or that. But it's a lot of fun. Toilet ball is a great game. So again, use that as a kind of a reward after they had a good hard practice. Last video we're going to show here is uh, climb the tree drill, climb the tree game. <clears throat> and the, people use different variations of it. I've always, did, what you're going to see here, use this. Uh, it is a great uh, warm up, actually. I use this a lot as a warm up. And it's a good coordination drill, good strength drill for both people who are doing it. You'll see what I mean when you, when you see the guys do it here. And uh, I had big, strong T.J. Barnett be my model for it here, and the guys are rolling around on him. But, uh, you know, again, you don't, the, the idea is you don't want to get the biggest guy in practice. You want to get somebody your size because, well, you'll see as it rolls, you'll see what I mean. It's a good drill for strength and um, coordination, staying. So you're climbing a tree. You don't want to fall out of the tree. You don't want to fall down. So you'll see what I mean here. 
climb the tree drill, great warm-up game. So here we go. This is good for agility and balance and all this stuff. Yeah. It's a good drill for both people doing it, but you both get a good turn to do it. Okay? Now, one person's going to have to stand real strong. We call it climb the tree. Okay? I don't know if you guys have done it before. It's a great, great drill. It's a lot of fun to do. All right, DJ, I'm going to have you because you're a big, strong dude. You're a football player and everything. I'm going to let Mark climb on you because you're a nice dude. Because you won't fall over. That's all right. right. Now, you don't always have a guy twice your size to do it on because, you know, but this is really good for both people. All right, now TJ's job is to stand strong, stand on his hips or whatever. He's going to stand as strong as he can. He wants to be a sturdy oak tree. He does not want to be a little sapling, you know, like a little, you know, tiny tree. He wants to be as strong of a tree as he can, okay? Mark's job is he's going to jump up on him, he's going to climb all over him and not fall out of the tree. Right? It's, a, it's a fun drill to do, but it's a good strength drill. He hopes he doesn't fall out of the tree. Now, Mark's job is to climb all over TJ, all over different directions, up through his legs, around over his shoulder, around his waist, where he, and TJ wants to stand up strong and not fall over either. Okay? Okay, there we go. And he just keeps crawling around. <laughs> Go through all the way through. Yeah, that's perfect. Look how he's doing it. Mark's done a few of these with me before. Oh, no. That's why I picked Mark. That's <laughs> 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 helpful. That's great. Because you got the idea, right? And we'll give, we'll give each you a full minute. Okay, a minute. And that's a tough drill. Oh, that, that well, if you're a weak now. tree. Yeah. And then, <laughs> that's that, he would have to climb on him. Okay? Alright, so Okay, start climbing the tree, go. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, you fell off the tree. There you go. We can do it. There you go. You got to jump on Okay, the, toy, uh, the uh, climb the tree drill is, you know, as I said, I use it as a warm up, but it is just a good workout. You know, if you, if you and your, your partner, you say there are a few guys on the mat and you want to do something interesting and different. Um, it's just a good game to play just to kind of, you know, if they don't have a lot of people on the mat, you guys can do this with each other. And it's, it's just, you know, it breaks up the monotony of a, a, a you know, different type of training. So it's really, it's a really great game. I highly recommend climb the, climb the tree drill. It's, it's a good one. Well, you know, um, with this, this whole talking about, you know, coaching and structured training, did you notice the, the ongoing theme of everything here? It was structured. Okay, the, the, the people were having fun. Everybody on the mat was having a good time, enjoying themselves, but it provided structure to the whole overall training atmosphere. And that's really important. You just can't show up and, you know, warm up, shake your head, shake your hands out and say, let's beat each other up or let's play games all the time. You, you have to have structure in your training. And so use these games, use these drills and, and others. There are plenty of others out there. You know, you know, get on the Internet and look at all the different videos. You'll see a lot of different judo games and drills you can use. And make up games yourself. I mean, why not? You know, just as long as they're safe. But they do provide structure and use them in a structured, balanced way so that um, you, they add to the productive value of, of what's going on on the mat that, that particular day or that night in practice. So judo games are really effective. Judo, they really are. They're a lot of fun. They break up the monotony. Um, they, they're great physical education. They're absolutely great physical education. And you can make different games for different types of things you want to do. You can make breakfall games. You can make all kinds of cool games that the kids and both adults, both kids and adults will really enjoy. So that being said, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show. I thought it was a lot of fun talking about fun and games, and I will see you next time.